Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's my absolute privilege and honor to be part of these wonderful meditations from the Word of God. And I keep telling you, there are very few people who get to hear such messages and they don't often tend to get the time, energy, and privileges to meditate through these verses. Why? Because the circumstances in life are so unpredictable, isn't it? Therefore, we have no idea what is in store for today, what is in, what trouble could be for tomorrow and all that. But by saying that, I don't mean to say that every day you need to expect trouble, but every day you need to be equipped with that powers given to you from above to overcome. Because Bible calls us to be the overcomers fighting that good fight of faith. And faith is the tool, it's the weapon which has been given into the hands of every believer in Christ. Yes. And minus this weapon, um, technically speaking, the weapon is the armor of God. That's the word of God, Ephesians 6.17. And there are six weapons which are attached to it. And in one word, it can be described as the armor of God. Ephesians 6, if you read from verse 9 onwards all the way to 17, you will understand that our fight is not with the blood and flesh, but with the principalities and the powers of darkness. And we have very well discussed this, how to fight with these weapons. Who is your enemy? Many people think the enemy is your neighbor or that auntie, mother-in-law, father-in-law and all that. Right? No. No human being that's formed in the image of God is our enemy. It's not that you need to practice this principle by force. Ah, this brother told or this Bible told. Therefore, I have to coach my mind not to look at this brother or sister as my enemy. No, he is not my enemy. She is not my enemy. You know, you don't have to forcefully practice. Why? Because the truth is they are not your enemies. It is your imagination. It is a mythology. It is the fairy tales that's been widely spread across um, the human, human, human uh, I mean, mankind across the uh, peripherals of churches, across all the places. Um, and always we look at the externals, the behavior and the behavioral pattern of a brother or a sister. And we tend to call that, look at the behavior. Did you notice her words? Did you notice the eyes? Did you notice the mouth and all that, right? You don't have to describe the organs because they are well visible. <laughs> What is not visible is what you and I need to look at. And we need to learn to examine the spirit of a person. Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 to 23, examine the spirit of a person. Test the spirit of a person. Everything it says, which means every incident, every circumstance, which travels through a person. And the, the day you start to practice or live by this doctrine, that is, not going, that, that is not going to be any kind of disturbances in your life. You will be a peace-loving person. You will be a peacemaker. And everyone who have come against you for trouble, they end up becoming your friends. Not all of them. There could be few people who would still remain as your adversary. Because why Jesus was not able to make peace with anyone. But was he a troublemaker? Did he go around pulling for the brawls and quarrels and disputes? Nothing. right? He, he was doing his job. The very purpose why Father God sent to him to this planet Earth. But people who heard him couldn't agree. People who even enjoyed the miracles, miracle to touch. Not all of them died as blood witness for Jesus. In fact, when he healed 10 blind people, or 10 lepers, I'm sorry. One of them came back and said, Hallelujah and praise the Lord, which is not written in the Bible. He said, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? He happens to be the Samaritan. 
he was not jewish but as the remaining nine were jewish and the one samaritan came back and thank god yeah um even after receiving the miracles people don't tend to give thanks that's exactly what we are discussing in this series warm welcome to the series by the way this is our 17th lesson um and where we are dealing from the concept of authority that's been given in the hands of every believer in Christ every soul that says jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords he is my savior he is the life and the way and the truth you receive that authority authority to forgive authority to be kind authority to bless people authority to empathize and sympathize authority to um be gentle all the nine flavors uh, that are encompassed within the fruit of the spirit galatians 5:22 23 but this is completely misunderstood by many believers in christ especially the spirit filled churches and charismatics and pentecost and so many other churches they are even worse than the mainline churches but they always finger point at the mainline churches and the traditional churches and they say hey they don't know how to read the bible they don't know how to meditate you look at them it's like a dead uh, fish and all that yeah yeah but you know what they are miles ahead of you in terms of practicing these doctrines yeah the authority to forgive and authority of love and all that not only in the social service but also um they help lot of poor downtrodden they give a good account of the money that's been collected you will find none of these in the spiritual churches how do you know you're asking me i have been everywhere how can you prove it i don't have to prove it to you here we will meet in the paradise or we will meet in the white throne judgment god is my witness god knew everything so i don't have to speak any lies here um if that was the case i wouldn't have picked this part time ministry where i put in all the talents and the skills and the time that god has given me it belongs to god it doesn't belong to me therefore i give it back to him and his people therefore i speak the truth i have seen it all that people why they why do they do it i'm a finger pointing at charismatics and spirit no i'm not finger pointing i'm saying you people are living in deception not all not all majority of them are on the side of deception same time i'm not super elevating traditional churches yes they're they're, they're not um well versed in the bible they don't um you you call it vibrant churches huh? all this band beating and jumping and clapping and all that you will see all this kind of uh, you know freedom um, or or these kind of liberated churches who moved out of traditional practices and um, the method of worship is free will freestyle you will see a lot of rock musics and rocks pop 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 music and all that and they call it as youth fellowship and all that nonsense i have seen enough of those that way i still appreciate them that they have a method to practice but the thing is they are bound to certain methods and they call it as authority this is how their authority is predefined the authority is all predefined and we got to stick to that peripheral stick to those uh, rules rule number 3 rule number 1 2 agreed but then you also need to visit what is rule number 5 6 and 50 and rule number 500 and whatever right there are so many rules and there are so many laws there are so many commandments there are so many instructions there are so many admonishing words of god there are so many exhortations all encompassed under this authority and there are so many gifts of the spirit there are so many fruit of the living spirit of god that dwells in us and our body is the temple of god and how is it possible for you to live that static life there is a mission i forgot ecg or something right uh, in the icus they keep checking the heartbeat and when the static line comes with a beam a beep beep sound a static line right beam it it goes what does it mean static line the person is dead yeah god did not send his only son jesus to plant dead churches and church means both your life your body is the temple of god and also those church buildings where we gather for fellowship and i've always told i support both you need to have fellowship you need to have churches you need to be part of certain congregation christendom yes there are various functions of the church and the function, functions of the church are very limited they cannot fulfill every single need of a believer yeah they 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 are only like you know starter courses you get to a restaurant they give you starter courses such as soup and all that 
but then then you your 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 appetite is prepared then you order the main food and then you start enhancing your appetite similarly the main food always comes as a responsibility from every believer in christ the church can help you to 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 get you certain uh, uh, you know extent of the curriculum and uh, the church can help you to get a fair understanding of what this bible and the scriptures are all about and they're doing a fair job every congregation for that matter i accept the cult churches yeah who are all sticking uh, twisting the word of god according to their con convenience and they are called as antichrist churches never ever be part of such congregation walk out of those yeah old testament tights they will pick and the new testament blessings they will pick old testament curses they will pick whenever people are not paying tithes and all that they will mix and match according to the needs and that's why bible gives you that exhortations commandment instruction that test the spirit man for which you need to be well versed if you don't fall in line under this authority there is no way that you will be able to understand and do the right things in your life i keep telling this now and then in all my servant uh, sermons uh, as inspired by my dear holy spirit that it is the responsibility of every believer in christ to safeguard his soul mind body and spirit don't blame this church and that pastor and this congregation that pastor is pastor is good but you know his wife why are you looking at that neither of these will come and cover you up or you could make a way for yourself to escape by blaming these two no they will give an account for their deeds you got to give an account for your deeds and the lord god will look at you and question yes you know they are bad and i also taught you certain principles that abstain from every form of evil deeds do not associate with the you know people pleasers or do do not have association with the uh, you know uh, people of the world worldly people why you did not follow this instruction why you did not abide in this law and commandment what would you say and obviously he's going to turn around and um, he's going to he's going to require an account from those people too without a doubt yeah they have no escape but you also have no escape that's why i told you right in the body mind spirit and soul 85 plus sessions are available there yeah we did not do it to accomplish some quantitative needs no we don't need popularity we need your soul god requires your soul the kingdom of heaven is longing to have you in paradise and then later proceeding to the city of god where mansions are being built and before which there is a white horse which mean which is prepared and they are feeding that white horse every single day with fresh grasses and all that yeah you will ride upon that white horse in revelation 19 and you will be part of that army the commander of the lord which is explained in book of joshua and it's connected to revelation 19 and all on which also we have done a series are you all with me so we started with some of the generics but very much talking in line to this series where we are discussing from the word of god that falls in line to this principle of authority right mark 121 22 is where we actually started to discuss about the unclean spirit and um extracting certain uh, principles how to deal with the unclean spirit and what is unclean spirit and all that but i think i did that explanation only for 30 minutes or so because to set the context in lesson 1 or 2 but i think lesson 2 onwards all the way to lesson 16 now we are consistently talking from this Mark 122 Jesus enters into a synagogue and he starts to teach and he teaches with the authority given to him from above which was missing um in the teachings that these people have absorbed observed from um scribes pharisees or any other scholars they didn't see the authority that's why i told many of the churches are like dead fishes you will not see any life in it right and similarly they observed these people's preaching were like dead fishes half the people yawning and half the people sleeping which means what both are absolutely useless they learn nothing but when jesus spoke the three days and three nights nobody moves here or there they all settled there they forgot their business they forgot work they forgot their homes they're not even worried whether the gas stove is on or off there is somebody going to 
you know burglar my house nothing at all but all these thoughts comes in the mind of a believer when he's going to sit in such churches which are like dead fish why because those pastors operate or fall under the different line of authority the father of lies is their authority but father in heaven if he's going to be the authority under whose regime under whose laws under whose doctrines under whose uh, teachings and preachings under whose um, commandments if the preachings are going to be you know what is say uh, uh, pre- pre- preaching or pre- preaching is going to be done then you will see what happened on those three days that nobody moves everyone went home you know with a lot of blessings blessed blessed spiritually and also they got their appetite full and uh, now, now don't worry too much about it not all of them got saved majority of them sought jesus again why because they would want to get that free food again and jesus turned around and said you all came because you wanted free food again huh? he did not mock he did not ridicule but that was the truth because jesus our god the father always looks at the heart not at the outward appearance you can see that from the book of samuel first samuel when um, who is that samuel the prophet samuel was sent to the house of jesse he asked all the people to all the children to pass by some of them were tall in stature like king saul and samuel says okay i will go ahead and anoint this guy he's looking almost like king saul and that's when uh, you know god says i don't look at the outward appearance but i look at the inward state and you know nature and stature of the heart and that's what i covered in the know your enemy series right it's invisible many things are invisible in the bible and you will not see that happening at all all right if you are falling in the authority under the authority of our god almighty you will always look at the things that are beyond things that are above things that are behind a brother what makes him to talk you will not focus on the words that are proceeding out of his mouth and feeling emotional and getting hurt and worked up and this and that and secretly you curse him sledge him slander him to death almost yeah how 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 would i be glad if this guy is dead right now and the fire from the heaven is going to burn him to death this is how many christians are behaving old testament old covenant teeth for teeth eye for eye blood for blood huh that's old covenant standard new covenant is all about i told you initially when we begin this session right it's all about forgiveness being kind look at all the nine flavors in the fruit of the holy spirit that's been given to every person every spirit you, you know you, ecclesiastes 12 7 says spirit is it returns to god and your body returns to dust and the spirit is the governing agent which takes care of the body and mind it controls body and mind but if the spirit is being controlled by evil spirit you can understand what will be the deeds of the body and mind what kind of words proceeds what will what will you do with all the organs where will your leg transport your body what will your hands do it will receive by bribery and it will go to adulterous women and hugger and kisser yes and what kind of gossips you will hear in your ears and then you will also start gossiping and slandering yeah there is a big connectivity between this ear and mouth and your eyes especially it will start to lust and you cannot control you will fall outside this doctrine you will you will fall outside this authority but when you are operating within these peripherals of this authority this authority is different authority right at the same time you will be given powers not to fight against the mankind not to fight against the blood and flesh you will still be a warrior and you will be still part of the spiritual warfare and you will still walk like that uh, captain of god army be part of that army and the captain of the host is jesus right that wonderful song we all sing now for the captain of the host is jesus we are following in his footsteps no foe can stand against us in the fray for the lord is marching on we are in his army yes ever strong and for his glory shall be seen upon the land i forgot the lyrics wonderful song do you understand the meaning huh? you're walking in the authority under the authority of jesus you're marching as a warrior as a soldier not to fight against the mankind that's not the authority of jesus that's not the authority of the holy spirit or spirit of god that's not the authority under which you operate or exercise the powers given to you freely as per the new covenant standards 
That's not the reason why Jesus came down to this earth and died. For every mankind, for every single human being. And as much as you are grounded and rooted in this doctrine, you will clearly understand what is the very reason why are you existing on this earth. And there is a day coming that every one of us will have to go through that day. That's called as the last day on earth. That's called as the day where your expiry date will <laughs> be met. <laughs> we are all like, you know, products. This product, the, your body, no, it has expiry date. But your soul doesn't have expiry date. It's immortal. Your body is mortal. It returns back to earth. Ecclesiastes 12.7, right? From dust you were made and your body returns back to dust. Yeah? Because sin pronounced, uh, you know, death. For the wages of sin is death. That sin is still reigning in our body and it cannot be abolished. And it separated us from the love of God and the glory of God is lost. And we can never regain it as long as we live on earth because the ruler of this world is devil and sinful deeds are going to prevail. Yet, you will be living such a glorious life. You will be living victorious life. Because why? You are operating under the authority. Yeah, you are operating uh, with the powers given to you under the authority of our Lord God. Yeah, The second Adam who came and defeated the devil right under the cross... And you will be able to crush the head of the Satan right under your feet. Romans 16.20. All of you are with me. But if you don't understand this authority given to you according to the new covenant standards, your fight is not against the blood and flesh, but your fight is against those evil powers that are operating this mankind. Applicable to believers, applicable to unbelievers. If you are a believer, if another believer is going to fight with you, oh, he's my brother. How can I fight against him because he has accepted Jesus? Similarly, when the unbeliever comes and talks to you in a rude language, you will be able to forgive with the same measure you are forgiving your brother, your own children, your own parents, your own husband, your own wife. Because why? They are all my blood relations. They are, we belong to the same church. They are all same believers in Christ. He's a Christian brother. How can I fight? Very nice principle. I will tell you, brother, hardly there are people like you who have the attitude even to forgive another brother in Christ, another sister in Christ. Nobody has that kind of patience too. Which means what? You're you're already, you know, in the prime you're you're out of primary school uh, school. You're already, you know, deserving to get into college. But if you're not able to forgive even your brethren, you're still in the kindergarten standard, which means you have not grown under the authority. Some leadership you will see, you know, the country doesn't prosper much. Why? Because that leadership is full of corruption, bribery, murder, cal calamities, commotions violence, communal violence, and this and that. The energy goes towards the negative perspective. But there are certain leadership. I didn't talk about our India. I'm telling in any, any country. Generally, I'm telling. Now, don't call me which leadership. Come and tell me. I did not mention any name, did I? My, my job is not to preach politics in these sessions. I leave it to the reader's choice. Sorry, listener's choice. Yeah. But some leadership you will see any country you will see the country nation is prospering and the, and the citizens are benefiting. The taxes are, you know, lowered. They get many benefits, free insurance. Yeah, the petrol prices come down. The grocery prices come down. A lot of free programs are being announced and unemployment is abolished. See, people don't ask anything free. I'm telling you, all the citizens... Across the world, not only belonging to India, they all ask for a job. They're ready to work, but they don't get job. So they end up in a lot of criminal activities to make money and all that. Why? Because the authority is not foreseeing that is benefiting the citizens. The authority is looking at benefiting for themselves. And that's the difference between operating under the authority of the father of lies, where you will be filled with all demonic wisdom, which takes you towards negativity which takes you towards a perspective of destroying, destruction, murdering. A bunch of liars will be more. They'll be multiplying. A bunch of looters multiplying. A bunch of blasphemers multiplying. A bunch of corruption, you know, uh, corrupt loving people or, um, you know, a bunch of uh, malpractitioners. You will see them multiplying. But then when you operate under the leadership of this father of truth, his name is Yahweh God, who came in the form of incarnate deity, blood and flesh. His name is Jesus. And you operate under the governance and partnership yeah, of your dear Holy Spirit. You will see your life, your soul is being used. 
your body is being used for all the constructive purpose you will be such a loving brother not only to sympathize but you will empathize you will bless you will such you will be such a blessing to poor downtrodden needy regardless of people belonging to any religion any caste any language you don't care or any color of the skin you don't care you will learn to love everyone and people would come and throng on you that's what happened with jesus wherever he went people thronged on him bible says and majority were gentiles <laughs> very few jewish people thronged on him yeah everyone loved jesus for this quality why because he was operating or exercising his powers operating his thoughts under the leadership under the governance and or falling in line under the authority being very submissive to the authority that's a kingdom of heaven yeah we have been discussing on the same lines now we are operating mark 122 uh, i'm stuck right and that's why people were able to find the difference they were astonished bible says surprised they have never witnessed anything like this when you walk into your workplace don't people get astonished how this guy is able to be like this very productive at work but also very productive spiritually also very productive empathizing people sympathizing people where do you get this energy brother where do you get this kind of um you know resources brother they will come and ask you and that's a good opportunity for you to share the word of god share the love of jesus and i happen to be there many times and i thank god for what i am absolutely my boast is in the lord not a single day i would get that little pride but even if i would get that little pride immediately i will place it right under my feet why because that pride is from different authority and his name is lucifer i would never want to fall under his authority all boast all my boast is in my lord my god my jesus yeah and when you walk into some other places the foreign land people will be astonished looking at you not surprised not looking at you ah, yeah anyway this guy is different astonishing means what you know extremity of you know the surprise and uh, admiring you and getting inspired highly inspired what an what a character what a speech he gave or they would say i went approached him very angrily but what a look he gave that look of love that look of forgiveness stopped me i couldn't fight with him any more i couldn't quarrel with him any more you hear such confessions or the same person is saying my god what a look he gave man i went with such an anger i got scared by looking at that guy's angry face and i ran from that place this is the state of many believers in christ and they talk proudly you know how god defeated my enemy <laughs> here that old covenant person operating under the authority of lucifer honestly i'm saying this so time to change okay we had been meditating from the book of psalm 119 book of psalm 119 our meditation verse is from 1 to 8 and i will be kicking off a separate series where bible talks about meditations on the excellencies of the word of god it is all about super elevating the powers associated with the word of god and if you are operating all your deeds or exercising your powers all or your functions every function that proceeds out of your body mind and mouth and soul and spirit are falling in accordance or in line to this word of god word of god is nothing but god yeah you are falling in line to the word of god means you are falling abiding in the laws and commandments of god you are worshiping god through your deeds and you are an excellent person and this chapter this this sorry this chapter psalm 119 it's very very special and i'm going to kick off a different series but in this line of authority we will meditate only from psalm 119 1 to 8 just to give you a foretaste as how excellent is the word of god and naturally people will benefit it's not the other way around but still you see a lot of people don't benefit benefit they don't grow their life is like that static line which is which is something that you see in that ecg box they are dead spiritually they are dead materially they are dead emotionally they are dead some it's they're walking like dead bodies that's why jesus looked at pharisees and said hey you white wash tomb bunch of dead bodies bunch of graveyards and you will see such a stench when they walk closer to you you would avoid such people i i would refrain talking to some people not that i hate them but i won't be able to take such things in and i would secretly pray for them it's not that i hate them i love them 
but i cannot waste my time talking to these people same topic they will rewind for 20 times i meet them 100 times 100 times every single third every single hour i speak to them they will talk about the same topic brother you look at my sickness brother you look at this pray for me brother pray for me you don't need anybody to pray for you in any of my sermons did i ever say that hey any prayer requirement send the petitions to my home i am going to fast and pray for you that's your job if i have a requirement it's my job my duty my responsibility and that's what my authority had taught kingdom of heaven is my authority watch and pray let's you enter into temptation huh many things be anxious for nothing make your request known to god in thanksgiving and in prayer yeah pray from the word of god which is the armor of god and that's the best method to fight against the wiles of the devil ephesians 6:17 in philippians 4:6 which bible are you reading same bible no it is in your bible also that's why i'm giving you scriptural references because nobody should think oh maybe he's talking from a different bible no 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 it's the same bible whatever bible god gave you same bible he gave me because our god is merciful to both you and me uh, he is not partial <laughs> i was cracking a joke i'm telling this humorously but don't get me wrong right i'm not trying to mock anyone here or hurt somebody's um, you know emotion not like that but it's not something that we should be taking it lightly okay now from the book of psalm 119 if you carefully look at this right you will be able to find that there are a lot of aspects that are given which we meditated a little bit yesterday um or in the previous session blessed are the undefiled in the way we explained it very clearly what keeps you undefiled many people press hard towards perfection they try to fight against the wiles of the devil out of their own authority out of their own doctrines out of their own powers out of their own will and i was there too i had my methods i put up a chart and i started marking in crosses and tick marks and crosses and tick marks and you know what initially i was camouflaging <laughs> I, i was cheating myself and the father because i don't want to see cross marks i started putting tick marks why because um if i started comparing this way if i was sinning two times and if i was able to resist the devil 20 times what 20 is greater than 2 therefore tick mark i devised my own formula some people are laughing huh? <laughs> why it's my doctrine it's my authority i started taking things too much on myself because why the trust in my under my authority in my own skills my own capabilities i can fight it out my own muscle power started to overwhelm but rather i should be operating under the principles of J, uh, john 330 oh lord you increase our prayers sometimes got to be very simple brother trust me simple prayers i'll tell you what are they simple prayer he made who is this peter guy lord save me when while he was drowning in the water but if the same experience a pentecost guy or a charismatic guy or a spirit filled guy will have to go through my goodness you will be making such a long prayer by the time you are drowned and dead this is exactly problem with many believers when situations are against you when lot of troubles overwhelm you keep your prayer short and simple god is aware man my brother my sister god is watching over you do not worry he neither slumbers nor sleeps keep your prayer simple but when all is well that's when you need to pray long asking god why all is well god because why bible never promises me a trouble free life are you with me or not see may i will tell you the simple sign if all is well in your life you can be 100% sure god is not with you that should be some or other troubles but don't look around see i'm telling you there are seasons for troubles again i'm not telling you that every single day if trouble is not there god is not with you not like that but then seasons for example for a consistent period of time 5 years not a single trouble brother you know satan was right under my feet no 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 you were right under the feet of satan because why you were on the side of satan you were under different authority and that guy will you will keep you calm and peaceful what fooling you deceiving you you are under deception brother yeah if you have to preach it, show me from bible anywhere the apostles of god single day they had a trouble free life no if you were brethren in christ you will always end up in the spiritual warfare but do not be afraid in this world there are troubles you will be overcomers 
some troubles may be in smaller scale some troubles may be in larger scale medium scale but some scale will be there right either in the form of that sickness little bit of irritations here and there or some bad dreams some bad thoughts and then you are fallen so through again immediately our people know troubles means immediately ah oh, what accident is going to happen today who's going to get get killed in my family or oh, who is going to get fracture his legs and don't look at always in this negative aspect it need not be that terrible but there will be something that will be troubling you why because that's how the spirit of god works that's how the two edged sword the word of god when it travels in you it will pierce your heart and it will cleanse you it will make you perfect and no one can say before god that they are perfect there is no sin in me 1 john 1 7 to 10 they are called as liars and they are worshiping the father of lies am i making sense therefore don't look around oh where is my trouble 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 where are you then only it's proven that i am operating under the authority of god not like that some days you know god gives you rest so don't worry on that day no trouble uh, god that means you left me uh. no 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 our god is merciful god loving god he wants you to be trouble free certain days yeah maybe on the days of sabbath <laughs> he wants to give you that freedom from trouble and all so i'm telling you uh, if you are operating if you are if sorry if you are exercising your powers under the authority of god the experiences that you go through will be wonderful awesome you will be such a testimony loving brother for christ yeah who walks in the law of god they will remain undefiled and to proceed with verse number 2 um, on the same lines only i'm talking today it's going to be a shorter session we will close in another 8 9 minutes we will round it up to 45 minutes blessed are those who keep his testimonies what is this testimony who seek him with the whole heart testimonies are nothing but you will walk as a testimony testimony means what many churches give that testimony time and they will pick up the mic and they will be starting from what happened to their dogs and cats what happened to their god and what happened to all these things will be related to materialistic stuff worldly stuff which is not bad i'm not denying that right you got a promotion conclude that testimony in 5 seconds god gave me promotion i thank god finished it's oh it's enough oh you know how much i struggle you know how much my boss harassed me tortured me keep it all with your with yourself nobody needs to hear that stories because every one of us go through struggles and harassments and troubles yeah but how god promoted you will be an inspiring message or you can make it to 10 seconds i was really really struggling my boss bet me hard he hate me because i was a christian yet god gave me the promotion through his hands yeah he was my adversary but he became my blessing 12 seconds over yeah but then there are certain testimonies where you need to speak for a longer time but you consult your pastor it can become a message now i am i'm i'm taking one step behind right what is the definition of testimony all of us understand this clearly now let's give a small test my definition of testimony goes through this whatever i have understood from the bible the doctrines the laws the commandments the instructions exhortations admonishing words of god principles and uh, promises i gave you already 9 or 10 different parameters as checklist hmm? all of this when it travels through my body or get inside my spirit or if my spirit is abiding in the laws and commandments my life becomes a testimony which means what you know 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 i would like to read for you very quickly and it says something like this let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers in word in conduct right in word in conduct in love in spirit in faith in purity my goodness this is good enough what is the definition of testimony come on check your let's check check your memory which word 1 timothy chapter 5 verse 12 correct okay okay chapter 4 verse 12 1 timothy chapter 4 12 is the definition of testimony so next time before you testify what god did in your life and how the word of god um what to say traveled in your life and changed your life making you a good role model right example means role model in niv version it comes more clearer 
or I, I don't remember exact version, BSI or NIV or study Bible, I don't remember. It calls your, uh, it's, it's, or student's Bible, I think so, children Bible. Yeah, role model uh, to the believers. Believers means what? To your church and also outside. People will see you are in word. We will meditate that alone and we will close. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure we will learn something fruitful here, right? Role model in word. Word means what? You will your word will be such a word of authority, such a word of promise, such a word of commitment, such a word of faithfulness. If you commit something, your word will be yes and no. One Second Corinthians one twenty. Why? Promises of God is uh, are yes and no. Anything that proceeds out of the mouth of God will not return back to Him void. And when you speak those promises, claiming. This is the promise of God in the name of Jesus. Such will be the power of your prayer. It will not return back to the person void. Some people pray for long hours. Nothing happens. Why? Because they are not claiming in the way it has to claim. It has to be claimed. Why? Because you are not living as an example. You are not living as a testimony. Therefore, this promise doesn't work in you. Some antibiotics work for some people. Some antibiotic, antibiotics, antibiotics doesn't work for some people. The same antibiotics which worked in some certain people's body according to their genetic structure and etc. It doesn't work in other person's body. So therefore the doctor prescribes a different antibiotic. Because why? His DNA is different. His genetics are different. Right? His cell levels are different. They will take a complete blood count. CBC, CBC right? Based on that cell count, they will prescribe certain antibiotics. Similarly, you have to be a role model. Only then this medicine will work or this promise will work through your prayer. If you are not a role model in the words that you speak or in your conduct, conduct, right? What? Conduct means what? Externally all good, internally full of garbage. You will say, brother, how are you? Inside of you, you will be sledging. Stupid fellow. Look at him. Uh, this fellow deserves such a big car, uh, jealous, bitter envy. But outside, ah, oh, what a beautiful car, brother. May God bless you. But inside, full of hatred. Yeah, external con contact. Uh, world looks at external contact. Our God looks at internal contact. Hmm? Internal conscience. How are your thoughts? Yes, it's all to do with this condition of your spirit. And that's why we spoke 85 plus sessions. In that series. And it is not yet over. Yeah, we just stopped it and we came here. We will go and revisit that. Maybe it will go to up to 200 sessions also. In love. Love and conduct. Both are connected. See, next is spirit. Love, spirit, conduct. All three are connected. If the condition of your spirit is full of love. Being governed and managed by the Holy Spirit. And your body is a temple of God. You are exercising the powers given to you by that authority that is father in heaven then your conduct outside and inside will match it will sink for many people it is not in sync externally smiling inside full of hatred bitter and bitterness uh, slandering thoughts to the extent of even how i would love this guy being dead right now christians have these kind of thoughts and few people even confessed it and few people without confessing you will be able to make out right in word, that brother tells something, no, he will do it. Is that the testimony what other gives of other other people give of you? You don't have to testify who you are. But Bible says you got to walk as testimonies what other people think of you. If you're if you're working in corporate industry, there is a appraisal that will happen every year, and they will take feedback from all the people. Some of my appraisals were terribly shocking because what I thought what I was versus what others think, they don't think at all. And I'll be so upset initially. I was a very immature fellow, but later I understood this is how the world looks at you. Then that gave me a message. Perhaps this is how God also looks at me. Therefore, every single day I, I would start to introspect, introspect. Is God thinking of this, uh, like this uh, about me? And the Holy Spirit will say yes or no. Why? Bible also says no. It will be yes or no. Yeah, yes will be yes and no will be no. This is how the um, believers in Christ will talk. Hmm? Testimonies. 
and the holy spirit will tell you tell you means what to your spirit and your spirit will convey the same message to your body and mind no you need to correct no you need to go through these kind of corrections corrective measures no you need to go through this go through these kind of preventive measures sometimes you need to prevent getting into certain auditorium getting into certain uh, club dances getting into certain pubs getting into certain this and that or getting to meet certain people you refrain i told you that as an example already and the next thing comes you got to be a role model in faith this believer you know whatever circumstance comes this guy will never be shaken why because his mindset is so stable james 1:6 says if you are not that brother in christ if you are not exercising powers under the authority of god then you will be a very unstable person who will be like the roaring wave moving back and forth back and forth unstable unstable but you are that brother in christ exercising your powers and operating your functions given to you duties and responsibilities under the authority of god you will be a very very stable person and you are called as brother in christ who is very very faithful and man of faith have you seen some people very few people are like that they will never be shaken why their faith in god is so strong and you know last one with that we will close you know what gives us that stable mindset yeah with that we will close in one minute's time because you are that example and role model for purity look at that brother no way he will get into that place no way he will get into these kind of habits no way he will get into gossips complaining murmuring ah huh? you will you will never be able to spot bro- that brother wasting his time across you will never be see able to see that brother as a busy body he is a very busy brother but he will do all constructive things for the kingdom of god and for the people hmm? always i remind yourself right with that we will close um the testimonies blessed are those who keep his testimonies testimony is not what you think of yourself but what god thinks of you and what people think of you and some people even walk down and they will appreciate you don't go by those appreciations blindly even test their spirit and you go and introspect whether you deserve for that appreciation somebody calls you oh what a great man of god you are go 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 to god's presence and sit sit on your bed that night before you go to bed that brother told something like this i do i de- really deserve and the holy spirit will reveal no no there are certain problems you fix this then you deserve yeah this is what is called as blessed are those who keep his testimonies who seek him with a whole heart and who can seek him with his whole heart those that are role model of purity love faith conduct ah huh? purity and who can be like this those that have learned to be submissive under the authority of our father in heaven fall in line with the principles and doctrines and the laws and commandments of authority being pronounced to them by that authority they will be submissive those people will walk <clears throat> according to some 1192 and 1 timothy chapter 4 and verse 12 may god bless us heavenly father thank you for this wonderful time lord you have given to all of us and we are able to meditate from your word lord may this day be a day which will bring all light to my beloved brothers and sisters lead us by your si- your side and help us to walk under your leadership and your authority in jesus name we pray beloved please subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist listen to all the messages these are only going to help you to progress forward in your life and also share it with your near ones dear ones may all of us be blessed be an instrument in the hands of god to spread his holy word god bless amen